So yeah, first I would like to thank the organization for giving me this opportunity to explain a little bit what I have been doing uh, in, in Shanghai. We have been characterizing the Shanghai pet dog microbiome using long read metagenomics. So first of all, why should we care about dog microbiome? We should care because we know microbiome is associated to health, and I mean, if we have some health imbalances, the microbiome is associated to that. We should care because one health, we are not sharing only spaces, we are probably sharing some of our microbes with our pets. And we should care because also it has been seen that pet dogs seem to be a very good uh, model for humans, especially at the gut microbiome and the skin microbiome, uh, and we suffer from similar diseases. So how, how is dog gut microbiome in the literature? So most of the studies are based on the 16S. This means that we only have like taxonomic information and usually until genus or family level. When we look at the metagenomic studies, we find only five studies that have more than 10, 10 animals included. All of them are based in short read sequencing. This means that uh, these metagenome assembly genomes are maybe fragmented. They can miss some genes like ribosome genes and antimicrobial resistant genes. Uh, also, we can see that there are few reads represented. This means that uh, most of the studies are based from Labrador, Beagle, German Sheffer, and they are usually not pet dogs, but dogs living in nutritional companies where they test the food for the animals, etc. And an also thing worth considering is that the dogs are the most phenotypically diverse mammals, being chihuahuas and Great Danes, the same host species. So what we have been doing to try to uh, fill a little bit this gap, we, we have been sampling Shanghai pet dogs uh, using long read metagenomics. Here you can see our collection kit. Uh, in the pictures uh, uh, below, you can see some of our volunteers. Apart from that, we collected also a lot of metadata from the animals. So we asked the owners to fill a very uh, large questionnaire with more than 80 questions. It took around 20 minutes to fill. Uh, so we get also this uh, extensive metadata associated. Just a brief overlook to the metadata. What we have is like mostly medium breed size dogs. We have also some small breed, uh, breed dogs. The most commonly included were Shiba Inu, Poodle, and Corgi. We got around 50% males and 50% females. Uh, all of the dogs had mostly an indoors lifestyle, but 35% of them had some access to outdoor spaces like balcony or a garden. 75% uh, of the dogs were eating kibble as, uh, daily, and 67% of the dogs were cohabiting with other animals, being dogs the most common one. So we have some dogs that inhabit in the same household. So the first thing that we did is to put our data into context with other these few metagenomic studies that are out there. Our dogs, pet dogs, are the triangle ones, and you can see that there is somehow an overlap with the other pet dogs. That there is only one study, but they are somehow overlapping. But this, you can see here also that the colony dogs are somehow in a different part of the PCOA plot. So this is also something worth considering. So what we have been doing, we have been using uh, yeah long range sequencing with nanopore sequencing. We got also Illumina sequencing, 10, 20 gigabases of data for both of them. The first thing we did is like filtering and these things, removing hosts, etc. Then we proceeded only with the long read metagenomics to the assembly. We polished with, uh, first, with, uh, first uh, with the long reads and then we added only the short reads for doing the fine tuning and the final polishing step. And we finally bean together these long contacts uh, using SemiVin2, that it's a tool developed by Xiao Jun in our lab, and we got this metagenome assembly genomes. So how does our samples look like? So each one of these bars represents uh, one of our pets uh, included here. You can see that we retrieved, in fact, more high-quality max than medium-quality max per sample. The average was 36 high-quality max and 12 medium-quality max per sample. And some of these high-quality were in single context, and some of them even circular. So we got a total of 2,600 uh, max that when they replicated at the species level, this was like 320 species level, non-redundant max, and 80% of those were high quality and very, uh, very highly contiguous. Like the ones that were not single contact, they had an average of four contacts per bin. And we also got around 20% of medium quality max. So just to 
just double check that, yeah, we are like capturing the fecal microbiome, like we are sampling ev somehow everything. So for kind of confirming that, we gone, went to the raw reads, both the short and the long, and we mapped them to, to this catalog, and we find a large mapping uh, for both of the short and the, and the long reads. So 86% and 92% of the raw reads were mapping to this catalog. So how, uh, what are those maps? Where, where do they belong? They are mostly from Bacillota A, which is like firmicutes. Uh, then within firmicutes, here you can see some of the most prevalent species across dogs. So Laudia hanseni, for example, was almost present in like 100% of the dogs, followed by Faeca limonis ambulicata, Ruminococcus navus, etc. So the other question that we did is like, okay, this Laudia hanseni is that this in all dogs, how it looks like when compared in our cohort, like dog to dog. What we saw is like Laudia hanseni seemed to be highly diverse, like the genetic diversity was kind of spread and it was nothing, like the ones that sharing the household did not to see, seem like having, sharing more original clotate identity. But in contrast, Blaute argi seemed to be very highly identical across the whole, across the all dogs and especially if dogs sharing, sharing households. This is like a very specific example, but generally speaking, it's true we didn't have so many dogs sharing households, but the ones that we have, they were sharing, when comparing species to species, they were sharing more strains compared to, to dogs living in different households. And yeah, uh, that's, that's it. So some of the conclusions, dogs living in colonies present different gut microbiome profile when compared to pet dogs. In dog gut, long read metagenomics reconstructed most of the bacterial community as high and medium quality max. Long read metagenomics enabled the, the retrieval of highly contiguous max, even single contig ones. And dog sharing households seem to share a larger fraction of bacterial strains when compared to dogs living in different households. And finally, we'd like to acknowledge all the people collaborating in this study, especially Luis Pedro Coelho, who is my supervisor, and also the, the funding agency. And of course, I would like to thank all the dog owners and all of you for your attention and all of the <laughs> main characters from, from this study. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So we uh, do have time for a question or two, if someone would like to ask one. Is there, oh, there we go, yes, uh, Seth. Uh, maybe you, you're going to look at this in the future, but are the strains shared with human strains? And what percent? Yeah, that's a, that would be very cool to look, but we don't have the, the data for the human. We only have like the dog uh, fecal microbiome. Like, yeah. ethically speaking, was much more easier, you but I guess we can go to the public databases yes. and, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we will, I think we will do that. Yeah, give that a shot. That'll be yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Thanks. And then uh, Alex, back there. Yeah, thank you. Very, very cool presentation. I have a quick question. Um, when I um, come from a field of ancient DNA, and when we then sometimes look into paleofeces of dogs and compare them to modern dogs, then we saw a very large discrepancy, and we kind of assumed that this is because of the diet, they, that they do that. Did you actually try to also, or are we planning to try to see how much of an effect the diet, the different chows they eat, has on the diversity of the max, and if they're kind of adapting to something, or like the bleeding? Yeah, 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 I mean, we have diet information, so yeah, this is a thing definitely that we, we will check. It's true that most of our dogs like, have like dry food, kibble kind of diet, so yeah, but maybe adding some of the other pet dogs, but I'm not sure they have, the pub they have published the diet, so yeah, we will try to do something about that. For that reason, we were asking some, like, a lot of metadata. We also know that some of the dogs take some sub supplements and things like that, and yeah, we would like to explore that a little bit more because I think we can see something there, yeah. Thanks. Super, well, thank you again. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for coming all this way. <laughs> thank you.